The U.S. president is offering his prayers and support to victims of Hurricane Harvey. President Trump was in Springfield, Missouri on Wednesday pitching his plan for tax reform. You'll remember Mr. Trump has been here before to the Houston area. He's been criticized for that visit to Texas for expressing uh, interest in the crowd size of the people who came to see him uh, rather than actually meeting the people one-on-one -on -one in those crowds, the people who have been affected by this storm. In his last speech, the president struck a more compassionate note. Listen. In difficult times such as these, we see the true character of the American people, their strength, their love, and their resolve. We see friend helping friend, neighbor helping neighbor, and stranger helping stranger. And together, we will endure and we will overcome. The people uh, President Trump's talking about, right here. Uh, many of the volunteers here, many of the people who are receiving help, a lot of people are here to help. Earlier, I spoke with two missionaries who came to the Houston area to lift people's spirits. Listen. What compelled the two of you to come here? People. <laughs> Passion. Like, we, we, Victoria and I have this history. We've been friends for like over 10 years, but, so I called her on the phone, like the day before all this went, you know, haywire, and we're looking for places to give. Well, I found out that a lot of the shelters was at capacity with our volunteering and their needs, and I'm like, listen, Victoria, this is going to sound crazy. I think God is telling us to do something called shelter worship. She was like, let's do it. <laughs> Didn't even get the, you no, know, like, go back and forth. She said, I'm there. So we, we meet at the shelter. We did not rehearse. We did not know what we are going to do. And we, but we know our lane. She's, she's worship. She's amazing worship. And I was a motivational speaker. And so I'm speaking to these people. And it worked out. And just to see the countenance was like, what? You know? So, Victoria, how are you helping? What, what are you doing when you go through these halls when you meet people? Singing. Like, but even before that, just meeting people and encouraging them, letting them know that hope is yeah. still present. Sure. And um, even if they don't feel that, hopefully by what we're able to do, they will before we leave. So... <laughs> That's it. It's <laughs> an example of how you're helping. Absolutely. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, all is my song. <laughs> and let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the roots of for my life. Oh, is my song. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Do you want me to sing after that? <laughs> if you'd like. No, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I, so my, I, I sing, but that's not my calling. I'm a, I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor, I'm a minister. And so I just motivated the people to let them know that even though that they lost material things, that they still have their mouth, they have the activity of their limb, and they should be grateful. And that's, grateful people are not, they, they don't look at what they have, and that's not what success is. It's the fact that you, you came out alive, and you, you have, you're in your right mind. You have, I mean, just to think about it, it's devastating to see what had happened to the people, but to put a smile on your face and to be grateful, it's like Job. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he looks bad, I'll trust God. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. We're helping people trust God. <laughs> you guys both make me so proud of myself. Oh, oh, thank man. you so much. Thank, awesome. you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Thank